I couldn't be happier. We have some folks in the studio with us this morning, among my favorites in Southeast Texas. Forget the fruitcake. Don't think about eggnog. It's Texas. It would not be Christmas without this bowl in front of us this morning, tamales. Guillermo uh, Bacar is with us from Carmela's uh, restaurant, Mexican restaurant. Eric is also here this morning. And you guys, I, I, I know you see me on a regular basis because I'm coming in. I, I love the tamales. I like the enchiladas and I'm real partial to one of the soups that you guys do there. Uh, it's very good. But uh, we were just talking, you guys are now, how, long, how many years in business? We're in business for uh, 13 years. 13 years yes. and uh, again always a place that people enjoy for lunch or dinner or whatever if you had to pick one specialty what's the number one seller in the restaurant i would say the muy bueno is it really yes I that think one that's plate like on the top sellers and on that plate is what it's like a it's a burrito with a fajita meat inside refried beans pico de gallo and guacamole it's you interesting how popular tex-mex is it is you know, in our in our city, because we have a lot of Tex-Mex restaurants. What makes yours stand out? Do you think? Um, I think our uh, our service. I think it's, service is up there. Yeah, and it's really like family oriented. You know, so a lot of people like choose us. Yeah, and, and I think I think longevity has a lot to do with it. People are comfortable at Carmelo's because they've been so many. It's kind of like you said. It's, it's kind of like the neighborhood restaurant. Yeah, it's like a family restaurant. Yeah, like, it uh, really is. Everybody knows each other. Whenever you yeah. go there, everybody knows everybody. And and uh, uh, people are not afraid to, afraid to bring their kids. You know, you have the large tables. If you want to have 16 people <laughs> yes. in there, you're comfortable with it. Most of the people that come are comfortable with it. And I think that works to your advantage, too. Uh, let's talk about, you know, we were talking about Christmas tamales. Uh, we, you guys obviously have plates in the stu in, in, inside the restaurant that you serve with tamales on them. But you also serve them like half dozen, dozen, dozen. right? Yes, sir. Do they go out the door pretty fast? Yes. They're pretty popular, especially in the holidays. Especially in the holidays, especially yeah. right now. Let's let's talk about what you're looking at. That that is uh, that is a bowlful of tamales, obviously that you can pick up and take home. Let's talk about uh, what you set your tamales. Do you think apart from other restaurants? The recipe definitely because yeah. it's a it's a mom's recipe. Ah. So, but like like you know, some tamales you have to be really careful with the recipe and the way you make them. Right. That's the key to it. Right. Uh, we're using now uh, maseca. They also have a, a, a balls of masa, which is different. But this is uh, way better and way faster for us. Cause let's, let's, talk, because let's, Erica, talk for a second about masa, because people who may, never made a tamale don't realize that's what you're really, that's the whole thing that holds it all together, right? Yeah. That's the outside of the tamale. Like once you, like you make the masa, you mix the water and the uh, lard and uh, I mean, once you make it, you just. You've got it, right? Because, I mean, you've, you've, let, me, let me just, can I show people this yes. real quick? Because yes. this, this is the masa, which, again, is essentially, it, it's corn flour, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the central ingredient that so many people don't realize that, uh, and, and people make it different ways. Exactly. Right. Like in uh, South America, they do it way different than uh, Mexico. And now, uh, you can put different things into tamales. Correct. I mean, you don't have to put beef. Pork mm, is a I very popular one, one yes. right? Like uh, right now for the holidays, people would order like uh, bean tamales. Really? Uh, white cheese tamales with jalapenos. Oh, now that sounds good. Shredded chicken and pork, of course. Pork is the uh, the main. That's the go-to. That's the go-to. I mean, that's the one most people recognize. Mm -hmm. How difficult? I mean, could if somebody at home wanted to make tamales and they'd never tried it before, can it be done? Can, yes. It can be done, but it's really <laughs> difficult. Yeah. It's really difficult. It's, well, it's time consuming. Yeah, and part of the problem is you guys make it look so easy. The people that do, I mean, it's like, well, uh, and then there's a tamale. But it takes a little bit of practice to be able yes. to do that. The, uh, at the restaurant, the lady that does our tamales, she makes about 40 pounds of masa. Wow, at a time. At a time, on one day. And then she just and then she, she just goes like, And how many tamales will she get out of it? About uh, five times more, like about fifty dozen. Wow! And you and I were talking during the holidays. You'll go through maybe two hundred dozen. Yes, of the tamales. Especially for the holidays. 
That's that's pretty impressive. Queso go out the door with most tamales? Queso, gravy, <laughs> hot sauce, yeah. guacamole. Those are the oh, three, three wow. things with tamales. All right, how did these, a couple of ingredients up here that people may not recognize, or they may, I don't know, uh, these uh, ancho chilies, how important is that? If you want to give the color to the meat, yeah, you have to have the chile ancho. That's what goes in there, changes it from just being pork. Yeah, yeah just yes. from being pork. Yeah, because that's just chopped pork. Or, right. or but then you shred it, then you add the ingredients, and you do, you can see the color. It becomes mm -hmm. kind of a redder. That's the that. key for the chili ancho with the, to give the color to the meat. Mm. And the seasonings uh, is another, another thing. Now, uh, do seasonings vary between restaurants? I mean, is that kind of what separates yes. one restaurant from another? Yes. Is what you put in yes. to the tamale? Anything, well, no, I'm not going to ask your secret recipe. That wouldn't <laughs> Remember, be fair. Remember, that's mom's secret. That's right. Mom would not like that if she <laughs> heard that. We were doing that. Uh, now, uh, I want to talk about what happens once. I, if I choose, I can either get these ready, hot and ready to go, right? Yes. From you can the get them either way. You can get them uh, frozen, pre-cooked, or raw, ready, if you want to steam, if you know how to steam them. Right. Is there a trick to steaming them if I want to take them home? I mean, is it pretty simple? It's pretty simple. It's like boiling water, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> and you just put them, that, that's pretty much everything there is to it, right? That's it. And you're ready to go. Which is your preference? Would you rather, if you were telling somebody, all right, you're going to buy some tamales for Christmas. I love the uh, white cheese with the jalapenos in it. I like those too. Yes. <laughs> How about you? I like the bean ones. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. I also, I got I to gotta confess, mine are also still the original to the pork. There's nothing better to me than a good shredded pork. But it's good for you to try something different. It is, and I like to. And, you know, the chicken is one that I don't think that I've ever really tried before because I always seem to come back to either the cake, you know, the white cheese. Because a lot of people think that the pork is chicken. Because the, really? the, way, the way it looks, right, they think right. it's shredded chicken, but it's not as pork. Uh, because it, it's to that point, it's kind of hard to tell. And, and it's inside the tamale right. on top of that. All right. Uh, if I'm going to if I'm gonna buy these from Carmelo's, do I have to call ahead or can I just call the day of? What's the process? Especially right now in Christmas, it's better if you call ahead because okay. like we have to prepare ourselves, like we have to make them and everything. And since they're selling like really yeah. fast, then we need to know ahead of time, at least a couple of days. If you can call a week ahead, that's way better because we have like days to make the tamales and everything. Right, right. It's just a couple of ladies that make them sometimes, so. And, and I assume there will be people that they don't want a dozen. They want six dozen. Yes. That are gonna be. If I just want a half dozen, I can I? You can yeah. just walk in. You can I just walk start in. say, I, that's usually what I do. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, half a dozen, a dozen is, is just no problem. It's no problem. All right. But if you want a bigger, you might want yeah. to think about it. All right. We'll talk some more. But again, if you want to stop by and visit with the folks at Carmela's, they'd love to have you, I'm sure. They're on Calder, same location they've been for years now. Uh, there's the phone number, and you also see their Facebook page. Check it out. We'll talk some more about some holiday Christmas tamales. It's a Texas tradition, one we're sharing with you here on The Morning Show. Coming up next, though, a four-year-old girl is asking for a simple gift. Find out how you can make her last birthday the most memorable she's ever uh, celebrated. That's coming up on The Morning Show. Stay with us.